When photons strike a cell, the dye's excited electrons are injected in the titanium dioxide coated electrode. Those electrons then flow to the counter electrode, and the electrolyte solution undergoes an oxidation reaction to replenish the dye's electrons. The carbon catalyst at the counter electrode facilitates the electrolyte's reduction reaction, thus completing the circuit. This cyclic flow of electrons generates a current in the presence of light. Let the bottle of titanium butoxide sit in ice for 15 minutes. While this is sitting, place a Teflon insert on a magnetic stir plate and put a Teflon stir bar in the insert. Once 15 minutes is up, add 24 milliliters of titanium butoxide to the Teflon insert. Slowly add 2.5 milliliters of deionized water dropwise. Remove the magnetic stir bar from the solution. Place a Teflon sleeve into the 60 milliliter Teflon line autoclave pressure vessel. Seal the container and anneal at 180 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Then allow it to cool completely before 12 to 24 hours. Pour the top liquid from the pressure vessel into the waste container, then transfer the remaining material into five 15 milliliter centrifuge tubes. Wash the titanium dioxide by putting water in the tubes, shaking it up, centrifuging it for three minutes and pouring off the top liquid. Repeat six to eight times. On the last wash, centrifuge the tubes for 15 minutes. Add 400 milligrams of the centrifuge anatase titanium dioxide to a three milliliter polypropylene plastic vial. Mix one 10% solution of acetyl acetone, one 10% solution of Triton X100, both by volume, and one 4% solution of hydroxypropyl cellulose by weight and let sit overnight. Add 4.15 milliliter increments of the 10% acetylacetone solution, shaking between each addition. Repeat with 3.3 milliliter increments of the 4% hydroxypropyl cellulose and 1.3 milliliter increment of the 10% Triton X100 solution, also shaking between each addition. Let the solution sit for at least 30 minutes to equilibrate. Locate the conductive side of a fluoride doped tin oxide glass slide with a multimeter. Wash the conductive side using acetone. Mark off a small square area on the FTO glass using tape. Place a small drop of titanium dioxide paste in the center of the square. Thinly spread this paste around using a rice plate. Let the paste dry in a 30 degrees Celsius oven and then take the tape off and place the slide onto a 450 degrees Celsius oven for one hour, then let the slide sit until cool. To make a blackberry dye, press or juice the blackberries and then strain or filter them until it's pure blackberry juice. You can add water for increased volume. New experimental dyes can also be used. Coat the bottom of a petri dish with the previously prepared dye. Place the cool titanium dioxide film conductive side down in the dye and allow it to sit for at least 15 minutes, but preferably longer. Remove the slide from the dye and rinse with water without damaging the film. Create a small square layer of graphite on the conductive side of the FTO slide in about the same size, shape, and location as the TiO2 film. To prepare 10 milliliters of an electrolyte solution, pour 10 milliliters of ethylene glycol into a glass vial, avoid exposure to water. This solution should be made fresh right before assembling the cell. Add 0.83 grams of potassium iodide. Add 0.127 grams of iodide. Replace lid on vial to minimize exposure to air and swirl until everything is dissolved. Using parafilm, build a wall around the titanium dioxide square one to two layers thick to make sure that the electrolyte solution doesn't leak out. Place one drop of the electrolyte solution on the titanium dioxide slide. Next, place the counter electrode on that slide, graphite side down. And then, secure the two slides together using binder clips. To measure the voltage, connect the positive terminal of the multimeter to the counter electrode and the negative terminal to the electrode.